Man, oh man. It is Wednesday. We have made it. Here it is. Wednesday. Hump day. In the heart of the Arkansas Delta. Good morning, guys. Good morning. Woo. Well, we had some rain fall down yesterday, didn't we? Dog. Gone. There was a whole lot of water fell down here in the Delta yesterday. God, I mean, I was beginning to wonder if we were going to need to go start looking for gopher wood yesterday. I'm not even lying. There was some serious water fell. I would dare say we were probably, I would dare say we were probably somewhere in that three to four inch range. I mean, it was coming down by the boat load yesterday. Uh, and you know, it started out okay. Uh, you know, just kind of light, drippy. Uh, and it was just a good, a good rain. That's that, you know, that's what started it up already. And I was like, okay, I, I can deal with that. And then it kind of broke away for a little bit. And then all of a sudden, the clouds just burst. And I'm talking, here it come down. And it come down all night. I mean, all night long. I, I told Mr. Nice, I said, I'm real thankful that, uh, that the air temperature is not as warm uh, as it has been because had we had warmer temperatures last night, I got a feeling we could have seen some pretty rowdy storms. So praise the Lord, we did not, and uh, everything got okay. And uh, you know, and the weather forecast has changed. We were supposed to have 10 days of rain uh, starting yesterday, but as I've looked this morning, really caught me caught me by surprise today. And uh, tomorrow and Friday, we are not supposed to have uh, any rain. At least that's not what they're calling. But I'll tell you one thing. It looks like it could rain again outside. There's nothing on the forecast. But uh, it's still kind of that uh, that dreary, dreary. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about? That that uh, dreariness that's, uh, that is out there. And so uh, uh, who, who knows? I mean, who knows? If it rains, it's just going to rain. Amen. I mean, if it rains, it's just going to rain. Folks, when you get in, say good morning to me. Let me know that uh, you are here. And then uh, please, please, please go ahead and share this out to your news feed. That would be so appreciative. And uh, we would appreciate that. That's exactly what I'm doing and trying to get this out. I've got to get this over to my ministry page. And then uh, I am putting it over on my personal page. Uh, and speaking of my ministry page, uh, have you guys liked my uh, ministry page? And I'm going to put a link on it here in just a second as soon as I can get in there to it. Um, because uh, I, I do some different things over there. I, we have uh, It is a place where lots of our uh, friends and uh, family from other uh, churches that we have served, uh, it's where they keep up with us at. Let me type this in real quick. There we go. There is a link to it that's going to pop up in just a minute. If you have not gone over there to like or to follow that page, I want to encourage you to do so. Uh, I do put things up there from time to time that are not on the church's page. And so uh, I would encourage you to uh, uh, to get over there and to like that page. That'll be popping up uh, on you here in just a second. Okay, I am now in the building so I can see who all is here. Good morning, everybody. There's Miss Sandy. Good morning, Sandy. Boy, I bet you got some rain up on the hill too, didn't you? Dog gone. Man, man, man. Let's see here. There's my bride. She is here. Let me see who else is here this morning. I am not seeing everybody, and I do apologize. I know there's more folks here. Oh, there we go. There's the Allens. Good morning, Tommy. Good morning, Arlene. Glad y'all are here. Glad y'all are in. Who else is here? Had a scare this morning. Let me see here. Took my dog out this morning. Oh, Oh no! Oh no! Boy, the only the only good snake in the world to me is a dead one. So I hope you uh, were able to take care of that Joker. Man, there's no nobody and their brothers got time for that. Uh uh, I'm so sorry you had that. Man, oh man, oh man. Mm -mm 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 -mm. All right, guys, come on in, come on in, and say hello. Let me know that you're here, and then go ahead and hit that share button. Mm. Man, that coffee is just right. Hey, real quick before I forget it, I mean, real quick, tonight, tonight, we are online only, okay? Wednesday night to Bible study, online only. We were making changes to go to the campus tonight. We are not, okay? Online only. Write that down. We don't want to uh, 
Uh, get anybody out tracking out to the campus because we're not going to be there. Tonight is online only. We will have everything ready to rock and roll and make some changes for next week. And you will be hearing more about that tonight. Tonight, say it out loud with me. Online only. OK, online only. That is where we're going to be. We're going to be right here and we're going to wrap up the book of First Thessalonians. We're going to be uh, covering chapters four and five, and it is going to be like lightning rounds. OK, so you guys are going to have to stay with me tonight because I it, it's going to be rapid fire. I'm not going to kid you not, because if not, we could go for a couple hours and I really don't want to do that to you. So we're going to hit the high points, hit the major bullet points of the two chapters. Because when we do start our new Wednesday routine, I do want to start something brand new, and that will be next week. So tonight we wrap up all of the book of First Thessalonians. Good morning, Brian Ponder. Brian's in the hospital this morning. Brian, we, we appreciate you tuning in, and we are praying for you, buddy. Uh, we are, we are, we are. Tonight, 6.30, First Thessalonians, chapters 4 and 5. If you want to go ahead and read ahead to get the, kind of the lowdown as to what we're going to be talking about, where we're going to be. Uh, that would be probably wise because, like I said, we're not going to read it in its entirety. We're going to be moving just like that. So that is tonight. Tomorrow morning, Friday morning, Lord willing, we'll be right here for the chat. And then uh, Sunday morning, all things are full steam ahead on Sunday morning. The coffee bar opens at 830 if you want to come in. And let me just, just go, go ahead and let this know. And, and y'all have got to help me get the word out. Uh, we've got uh, tables and chairs back out in our fellowship area for uh, uh, some fellowship time in the mornings. And, uh, uh, you know, the, we rehearse getting ready for the, the praise team and I, we rehearse on Sunday morning, starting at eight 30. And, uh, and so we're up there trying to get everything tuned in and fine tuned and worked out and, uh, uh, all the, the, the settings just right. And, uh, um, get the audio and the visual working and, and uh, making sure that it is uh, adequate. But the coffee bar is open. And if you want to come in during that time and just sit over there and relax and fellowship with one another and just have a great time in the Lord, we want to encourage you to do that. Come on early. Uh, again, it starts at 830. Our Sunday school is going to start at 930. And this week, y'all, 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 this week, Miss Pat's and Brother Norville's Sunday school classes uh, return. And so I know that for those of you who are a part of those two Sunday school classes, you are excited. Right now, the ladies are at the church cleaning those two rooms and getting those rooms ready. I know uh, uh, Mary Weddington and my bride are there, and I think Miss Pat's up there this morning as well. So uh, all of that is going on. And so I'm just, uh, I'm just, uh, let's see here. We, we are here. It is Pat, Pat, uh, Miss Denise and Miss Mary. Okay, good, good, good. So they are there getting those two Sunday school classrooms ready. So guys, 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 Sunday school is, and, and the, the restructure has begun. Okay. All the other adults are going to be out front with brother Larry this week. Johnny's on vacation. And so, uh, if you are not in Miss Pat's or Brother Normal Sunday School class, then all adults will be with Brother Larry. Uh, children's Sunday School, rocking and rolling, nurseries, rocking and rolling. And so, uh, that's going to be our structure for the summer. Our 40 ish and under uh, Sunday School class will return in a week when Johnny gets back. Uh, he and Dean are going to be gone all next week. So lots and lots of good things that are taking place. Let's see. I have another blessing to be thankful. Good morning, Margie, by the way. Our power was off for several hours last night. I, you know, I thought I read that last night from John. Uh, how long were y'all out, Margie? Uh, I know it was, it was a few hours. So how long were y'all out? And, you know, and I told Denise, I said, we really didn't have a storm per se. You know, the wind really wasn't that bad over here. Now, of course, you know, we're on the south side of town. We really didn't have a whole lot of what I would call a storm. It was just downpour. I mean, rain after rain after rain. I'm not kidding you. I'm so glad that I got my uh, uh, my ditches out by our road cleaned out on Monday. I mean, well, because that, that dude just, just uh, rolled right on through. And I know I went out this morning just to check on things, and I walked in just walking around and uh, man, oh man, I mean, my slicked up ditches just was able to get all that water out in a hurry. I mean, in a hurry. But I am so thankful that you guys got your power back on because it could have got a little warm last night. And so uh, I'm glad you did make sure all your devices are and stay charged. So that's always, uh, always good. Uh, Sunday, Sunday, seriously, come on in 830. Just come on in, grab a cup of coffee. 
Uh, Miss Mary uh, takes care of our, our uh, coffee bar, and she will get you fixed right up. And if you don't want coffee, we got hot chocolate. We have got cappuccino. We have got tea. So, man, just come on in. Like I said, come on in and just uh, sit back. If you, or if you don't even want to drink anything, just come on in and chit-chat with us. Uh, love to have you there. Sunday School at 9.30, and then, uh, do, man, First Peter is coming unwound. Amen. Uh, we have had some serious, serious messages over the past two to three weeks as Simon just really gets into sharing hope in a hostile world. And uh, uh, he is not playing games. And it is very vital to us today, just as uh, vital to us as it was then. And so uh, if you have uh, not been able to be on campus with us or not been able to uh, watch it online, please go back and watch those messages. You can watch them right here on Facebook, or you can go to our YouTube channel. Just uh, type in Ridgewood Baptist Church, Fourth City, Arkansas, and it'll bring you to our channel. And we would encourage you just to go ahead and subscribe to it. That way you'll be notified every time we post a brand new video. And everything is in, you can go to playlist and it's a Sojourner's Guide. Uh, you can just find all of those in order. Margie says that their power was out about five hours the first time. And about an hour the last time, oh, smokes, man, doggone. So y'all were out for a while. Well, I'm glad you guys are back back going. So good, 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 good. But you guys got a lot of water up on the hill, too. I know if Miss Sandy got it. I know y'all y'all got it just as much. I hadn't talked to Larry this morning. Boy, it was raining like crazy when we were on the line last night. Uh, it's, hey, and speaking of Brother Larry, whoo, man. Ed Joker just wrapped up the book of Luke last night. And if you were not able to join us last night, do yourself a favor. And that is go back and pick up last night's broadcast uh, as as uh, Larry wrapped up the book of Luke in our Sunday school series. So it's great, great stuff. Next week, uh, all of our Sunday school uh, curriculum has changed. It's a brand new quarter. And we're going to begin the book of Job. Uh, the next three months is going to cover Job and Ecclesiastes. And so uh, uh, you really do not want to miss this. The book of Job is phenomenal. I, I mean, just all up in your face phenomenal. And uh, that's going to start Sunday morning, and then Brother Larry will cover it on uh, on the Tuesday night of next week. Good morning, Debbie. Glad you're in this morning. Monday night. Monday night at 6.30 at the camp in Wynn at the Tri-County Associational Camp at our worship center is our annual Bible conference. Uh, have you got your way yet? Or have you got a carpool? Are y'all talking about it? Uh, make sure that you guys have got a ride. Everybody's riding together. Everybody's safe steps. There's no need. Everybody taking a car up there. Uh, y'all need to figure out who's going, who's going to ride with who. Okay, let's take a great group. I'd love for Ridgewood to be well represented there. Uh, good morning, Miss D. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, it's going to start at 6.30, and uh, you're, uh, you, uh, you've are you got to put up with me again. I'm going to preach for a little while. But then Brother David Young from Grace Baptist Church in West Memphis, West Memphis, is going to be bringing the goods. He and I are going to be preaching at the Bible conference. And so I'm, to say the least, that I'm excited is an understatement. I'm so honored, so humbled to be able to be invited to that. And so that is Monday night at 6.30. Uh, Miss Denise and I will have to be there a little bit early. Good morning, Ruth Hastings. Good morning. We're going to have to be there a little early. You know, just kind of get some things set up and uh, make sure that we're all there. Uh, but uh, I do want to encourage you to try to go if at all possible. Hi, Jesse. How you doing? How you doing this morning? Um, but so that is at 6 30. Uh, so like I said, be making phone calls, text, let's figure out who's going and who's going to drive and who's going to ride. Okay. So let's make sure that we are up there. That is Monday night, the 7th at 6 30. That is at the worship center on the campground. And just as a, uh, as an FYI, I've, I've already said, I don't think that it will be able to be uh, videoed. Okay. I don't think so. I don't think it's going to be videoed. Uh, just due to the, 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 the Wi-Fi on the campus is nil and void. It's just, it's not there. So, uh, with no, no strong Wi-Fi, it's going to be just next to impossible to broadcast it. So just as you know, 
All right, our June Bible verse that we are going to read today for June the 2nd. Our theme is Facing Your Fears. Hey, which by the way, yesterday on this same page, I posted a picture of that. So uh, you might want to scroll down a little bit and you might want to download that uh, that image so that you can have it, okay? Let's see here. Wow, what a way to start the day. Hey, yeah, exactly, right? Boy, I'd hate to go out this morning and start that mess. Whew. Okay, today, our Bible verse, Facing My Fears, is in Isaiah 41, verse 10. Isaiah 41, verse 10. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Now that is a word this morning. Holy cow. Whatever you're facing right now, whatever is weighing on you right now, whether it's problems in your family, whether it's debt, whether it's something at work, something in your neighborhood, maybe it's illness, whatever you're facing, God says, fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Did you hear that? You need to go over to this in your Bible, and you need to underline this or highlight this. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Folks, that is a word that we needed this morning. Amen. Holy cow. Holy, holy cow. All right, guys, we're headed to 1 Samuel chapter 26. We're going to wrap up the chapter today and we're going to get in there. Tomorrow morning, we begin chapter 27. Okay. Chapter 27 is where we are. Yes. Amen. Miss Sandy. I agree. Oh, Debbie. Yes. Love that verse. That's Isaiah 41 10. Uh, folks, I don't know what your routine is. I don't know what your habits are when it concerns Bible study and Bible verses and Bible memorization, but I have always found it that if I write out the verse, it helps me to to uh, just really implant it just a little bit deeper. You might want to write it on a post-it note uh, and put it uh, like on your bathroom mirror. You might want to put it um, maybe on your refrigerator, okay? Or put it on a, a cabinet door, something that you frequent off, often so that you see it a lot and just begin to to digest these verses and to implant them in your heart and plant them in your mind. So that way we can recall them when it is time that we face, you know, tough times that we can always recall these powerful words. Do whatever it takes. Maybe you want to write it out on note cards, make your own flashcards, um, whatever it takes to memorize verses. And to underline those, uh, I mean, you might want to date it in your Bible when that, that verse just came alive to you. So, uh, man, just do whatever it takes. I mean, everybody's different. I mean, I, what I do will not work for you. What you do will not work for the next person. So do what works for you, but you got to figure it out, right? You got to figure it out. Okay. Verse Samuel 26. Y'all head on over there. 1 Samuel 26, my word, that coffee is so good this morning. I cannot get the cobwebs out today. I'm really struggling to focus, so uh, that is not a good thing. I have got to study today. Holy cow, I got to study today like mad. So uh, y'all y'all pray for your pastor as I begin to wrap up all of the fourth and fifth chapter of 1 Thessalonians as we get ready tonight. Mm. Okay, y'all ready? Here we go. We are headed over to 1 Samuel chapter 26. 1 Samuel chapter 26. Now, we left yesterday. And David and Abishai had already snuck into the camp. And they had already escaped. And they took with them 
Saul's spear and his jug of water. They made it past the 3,000 soldiers. They made it past Abner. And there was Saul. Everybody just snoozing away. And they grabbed it and took off. And they got now apart from them. And we're going to pick up at verse 17. David has called out to Abner. He's called Abner out because Abner did not do his job. He did not protect the king. And David basically told Abner, I protected the king and you did not. Okay. And so now then, verse 17, we read it yesterday, but we're going to pick up again today because it's very important that we understand where we are. Then David, or excuse me, then Saul knew David's voice. See, he called out to Abner, but Saul's like, wait, wait. I know that voice. I know who that is. Is that your voice, my son, David? Woo, got to change your heart here going on, don't we? And David said, it is my voice, my Lord, O king. Notice, notice the genuine humility in David's words, in David's voice. David was so right and Saul was so wrong. But instead of showing a much superior attitude to Saul, he showed great humility because he respected Expected God's anointed king. Powerful, powerful example of humility. And he said, this is David talking, picking up at verse 18. And he said, why does my Lord thus pursue his servant? For what have I done or what evil is in my hands? In other words, can you please tell me what I have done? What are you doing? I mean, Saul, I need you to seriously think about what I have done or what you think I have done. In other words, let's set the record straight. What have I done? Can you tell me what have I done? What evil is in my hand? Now, therefore, please... Let my Lord, the king, hear the words of his servant. See, the humility is still there. Y'all with me on that? The humility is, is still there. I mean, it's just, it's crazy, right? The humility is unbelievable. If the Lord has stirred you up against me, let him accept an offering. In other words, if, if, if the Lord is the one doing this, okay? If the Lord is the one doing this, Notice David's giving Saul a way out. Let him accept an offer. But if it is the children of men, in other words, if other people are convincing you, if they've got your ear, if it is the children of men, may they be cursed before the Lord, for they have driven me out this day from sharing in the inheritance of the Lord, saying, go serve other gods. You see, this is, this is David saying, look, if it's other people that is causing you to push me away and to chase me down to kill me, then what you're doing is you're making it easy for me to want to go and to serve with other countries, other people who serve false idols. You're pushing me away, if that's the case. Man, this is a defense, isn't it? I mean, he is strictly laying it out. The pressure of all of this tempted David to consider leaving Israel. I mean, why would David want to go back if all he's going to do is be consistently on the run? Makes sense, right? So now, verse 20, so now do not let my blood fall to the earth before the face of the Lord. Now that is just a very simple way of saying, please, Saul, don't kill me. Please don't kill me. He's pleaded his case of innocence. He's pleaded his case that God was not the one that stirred this up. 
Maybe it was the people stirring it up. But Saul, whatever you do, can you tell me what I've done? Can you tell me what's wrong? Please don't kill me. Please don't kill me. For the king of Israel has come out to seek a flea as when one hunts a partridge in the mountains. Now, this is an incredible verse, okay? And so I just want to explain this just uh, just a little bit. And until you begin to pull back the layers, you really won't understand the, the, the depth of this. For the king of Israel has come out to seek a flea as when one hunts a partridge in the mountains. You see, partridges were very good to eat. And so there in the Middle East, Okay, it was always a delicacy if they could find the partridges and that they could kill them and have them, you know, basically on the table. The thing is, is that they were hard to catch. They were hard to kill. The thing is, is that if you chase them and if you chase them and you continue to chase them, they tired very easily. They tired so much that they couldn't fly and they ended up running on the ground. They literally, they didn't have enough strength left to fly. And so when people would go to hunt them, they would chase them long enough so that they would, yeah, they would stop flying. They weren't able to fly anymore. And when they were just running on the grounds, then the people could actually outrun them and they would kill them basically with clubs. So they were easy pickings. And so what David is saying here is that, look, you're chasing me so much that I'm consistently trying to run away and run away and my strength is leaving. I'm not able to get away from you anymore, and I'm going to be like a partridge. I'm going to be easy picking. David's really pleading his case here. Verse 21, then Saul said, I have sinned. Return, my son David, for I will harm you no more because my life was precious in your eyes this day. He recognizes it. This is the second time now. You notice that? That Saul has been in David's hand. And David could have killed him either of those times. I have sinned. Return, my son David, for I will harm you no more because my life was precious in your eyes this day. Indeed, I have played the fool and erred exceedingly. Now, it's easy to have listen to these words, and it's easy to, to say these words. The thing is, is that Saul has said these words before, hadn't he? He said almost the exact same thing when David had cut off a corner of his robe back in the wilderness of En Gedi. So now then, it's almost become automatic that this is what Saul needs to say. You can hear the words, but do you hear the humility? Do you hear the brokenness? Do you hear the repentance? And that answer is going to be no, okay? Because the words come out just pretty quick, all right? It's like, I know what you need to hear. Has there, have you ever uh, known anybody that would say things, what somebody else needed to hear? but they really wasn't a whole lot of, uh, of um, humility behind it, or there wasn't a lot of sincerity behind it. They just said it to make you feel good. Well, that's kind of what we have here. The king is saying what he thinks David wants to hear, but there is no amount of hanging on to that on Saul's part in the backside of it. Saul doesn't mean any of it. He is just simply going through the motions. Verse 22, and David answered and said, here is the king's spear. He held the spear. Let one of the young men come over and get it. In other words, you send one of your boys over here, one of your soldiers, and I'll give him the spear back. May the Lord repay every man for his righteousness and his faithfulness. For the Lord delivered you into my hand today, but I would not stretch out my hand against the Lord's anointed. He again comes back, okay, and says, I acknowledge who you are. You are God's man at this time, and I will not be the one responsible for your death. It's not going to happen. 
The Lord delivered you into my hand. I need you to understand that's all. But your life is not mine to take. You are the Lord's anointed. Verse 24, And indeed, as your life was valued much this day in my eyes, so let my life be valued much in the eyes of the Lord and let him deliver me out of all of this tribulation. In other words, I valued your life. God has valued mine. Let me live. Let me go in peace. Verse 25, then Saul said to David, May you be blessed, my son David. You shall both do great things and also shall prevail. The very last line of this verse tells us an awful lot. So David went on his way and Saul returned to his place. David goes here, but Saul goes here. David did not go back with Saul. He heard those words. He didn't hear the sincerity. He knew Saul was just being Saul and that nothing's changed. And he couldn't trust him. And so as Saul returned to his palace, taking Abner and taking all of those 3,000 men back with him, David and his 600 men said, yeah, not today. And they went on a different path. What a great word, man. What a great word. Tomorrow morning, we're going to pick up in chapter 27 as we are narrowing down this book. There's only 31 chapters. And so uh, starting tomorrow, we've got five total left. So hopefully we'll be done here in the next couple of weeks. But it has been a powerhouse book that we have studied. So much going on that has set the history for Israel, I do hope that you are enjoying it. I hope that God is speaking to you through that. If you ever have any questions or comments or thoughts about 1 Samuel, make sure that you leave them here in the comments so we can talk about them because uh, I want to make sure that you understand everything that we're going through, everything that's taking place. Don't let anything happen that uh, that I've not explained, okay? I mean, if you've got questions, you need to say something, okay? Say, hey, whoa, stop right, right here. Let's, let's chew on this for a minute. Uh, always make sure we talk about it because uh, we we can't grow if we don't understand it. Amen? Amen. All right, guys, tonight, 6.30. I do hope that you can join me tonight as we are going to wrap up First Thessalonians. Uh, it is going to be a great, great night, but again, it is going to be rapid fire, so please uh, buckle in, be ready to go at 6.30, okay? Got a lot, a lot to cover. If you happen to get out today, I'm sure that the roads are still a little bit on the damp side, so you want to be careful. Okay, give yourself plenty of breaking time. And it is not cool. It looks like it could be cool, but it is not. Uh, it's a little sticky out there today. Uh, let's see here. Tomorrow morning, I hope to see you back first thing. Remember, find out who's driving and who's riding on Monday night for the Bible conference. I am out of here for the day. If you see anybody, you know the drill. Tell them about Jesus. Amen. Tell them about Jesus. I love you guys so much. I will talk to y'all soon. See you tonight.